can scoliosis lead to arthritis in your spine? When patients are evaluated for their spine with imaging, typically an MRI or X-ray, very often the report will say the patient has some scoliosis and they have arthritis, and it sometimes becomes very confusing for a patient because they don't understand what's causing what or what the differences are. So when it comes to scoliosis, we know scoliosis is an unnatural sideways curvature of the spine. And not only does the spine curve, but it also has a rotational component or a twist component that's occurring, and the angle of scoliosis or Cobb angle measurement needs to be 10 degrees or greater for it to be considered scoliosis. Now we know scoliosis has different severities from mild, moderate, severe, depending on the size of Cobb angle, but that's the general, uh, general definition. Cobb angle 10 degrees or greater with a rotational component that can be either evaluated on an X-ray or an MRI. Now, arthritis is a condition that affects one or more joints, and it commonly affects or it's causing a wearing down of the cartilage that protects the joint from moving properly, and it typically can affect the bone above and below that articular surface. We typically can see bone spurs or degeneration uh, in the areas above and below the joint surface. And there's two main types of arthritis. We look at something called osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. Now, osteoarthritis is by far the most common type of arthritis. It, it involves that the cartilage that covers both ends of the joints where these bones actually meet are becoming, is becoming deteriorated or it's thinning. And it's thinning as a result of friction and the bones can, can cause asymmetrical wear of the cartilage in between the, the joint tissue. And this asymmetrical wear of the joint tissue can lead to pain, it can lead to impaired movement. Now, because it has to do with asymmetrical wear or overall thinning, it's very related to alignment of the joints, meaning that the, how the spine is, or how the body or the bones are aligned relative to each other can lead to asymmetrical wearing of these joints, which can cause this osteoarthritis that we're talking about. A lot of patients think osteoarthritis is like something that you catch or develop as a result, like it's like a disease that you can't avoid, but very often it's related to alignment. Unlike rheumatoid arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis is a very different form of arthritis. It is, some, it is where your immune system is actually attacking your joint capsules. So it's an autoimmune disorder and it's attacking the joint capsules and surrounding joint areas, causing the lining to become, um, the joints to become swollen and inflamed. This happens over time and it can destroy specific joint, uh, specific areas within the joint and within the bone. So saying somebody has arthritis is too big of a classification. You have to know whether it's osteoarthritis or an inflammatory arthritis or something like rheumatoid arthritis, which is an inflammatory autoimmune disorder. So even though there is relationship between arthritis and scoliosis, the most common type of association is with osteoarthritis, not necessarily rheumatoid arthritis. Now, when we look at scoliosis, we know there's different types of scoliosis. There's something called idiopathic scoliosis, something called degenerative scoliosis, something called neuromuscular scoliosis, something called congenital, and something called traumatic. Now, these five types of scoliosis are by far the most common. Idiopathic scoliosis means there is no known cause. With an unknown cause, we don't know why it's happening with the patient. Degenerative scoliosis is when the spine has some type of injury or some type of misalignment that's left uncorrected for years. The spine leads to asymmetrical degeneration or decay, and this asymmetrical degeneration can lead to a curve developing typically in later stage life. Neuromuscular scoliosis is when a patient has a neuromuscular syndrome, something like Marfan's, Ehlers Downer syndrome, neurofibromatosis, and they have something that affects the nerve system or the ligament structures of the body, causing a scoliosis to develop. Congenital scoliosis is when you have a hemivertebra in the spine that where the spine actually in, in utero develops a bone that's shaped like a triangle as opposed to a rectangle. And this hemivertebra will cause a curve to occur. And last is traumatic scoliosis is when your spine goes through significant trauma and causes the scoliosis to rapidly develop. Now, degenerative scoliosis is caused by degenerative changes in the spine, which is what osteoarthritis is. And osteoarthritis can lead to degenerative changes in the spine, which can actually help develop or unfortunately develop a scoliosis to occur. And unfortunately, scoliosis itself is a curvature in the spine, which leads to adverse or, or asymmetrical forces in the spine, which can lead to osteoarthritis. So scoliosis can develop into degenerative or osteoarthritis, and, and then the de degeneration and osteoarthritis can lead to scoliosis. So they both can feed each other, 
And a lot of times these things become very cyclic. As your curve and your scoliosis becomes bigger, your osteoarthritis or your arthritis and your bone degeneration becomes greater. And as your bone degeneration becomes greater, your scoliosis will begin to progress. And these two things cycle each other as you age with scoliosis and as your spine um, becomes more compressed as a result of gravity over time. So these, um, these share, they, they share each other. They, they work, they, unfortunately, they feed off each other and cause the problems to continue to progress. Because of this, scoliosis and osteoarthritis share a lot of symptoms. Very often when you see osteo patients have osteoarthritis or they have scoliosis, they can get dull aches at the site of curve in the middle or low back tends to be the most common. They get a loss of flexibility and range of motion because as the curve gets bigger, it gets stiff. As osteoarthritis gets more degenerated, the bones lose flexibility and they become more stiff. It can ir irritate nerve tissues as a result of the curve actually pressing on nerves leading to um, nerve type of pain. It can also happen as a result of osteoarthritis and the bone spurs actually irritating and pressing on nerves. It can lead to something called sciatica, which is pressure on the nerve that exits the low back and goes into the back of leg, the back of your legs and into your feet. And it's typically one side, not the other. It can lead to tingling and numbness in the legs or in the arms as a result of pressure to the nerve tissue. And it can lead to sharp leg pain. So unfortunately, as a result of either scoliosis leading to degeneration or degeneration leading to scoliosis, these things share symptoms. And both things are progressive over time, meaning the longer they stay there, the more damage they cause, the more likely they're gonna to lead to more issues, and the more likely they're gonna create more severe and more related compl uh, complications as a result of developing their osteoarthritis or developing the, the progressive scoliosis. Not every person with osteoarthritis will develop degenerative scoliosis, but unfortunately, the more degeneration you get, the more likely you are to get it. So our recommendation is that if you know you have degeneration that's occurring in your spine, is to try to deal with the underlying cause, and normally it has to do with alignment. If you have scoliosis, you're very prone to developing degenerative arthritis in your spine. So again, dealing with the alignment helps preserve the integrity of your spine and keeping your curve as small as possible. So our recommendation is to be as proactive and treat the spine as early as possible to help these conditions from worsening and causing more and more problems in your life. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.